Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, students, let's go ahead and review what I have in a previous video about absolute value functions. Now, up here in the blue, I have y equals absolute value of x, and this is what that function looks like. Now, if you recall, again, if you've seen the previous video, that means that for every x value, y is its absolute value. Notice how we never dip below the x-axis. In other words, y is always a positive. So, positive 1, positive 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. That's called the parent function. And that is what all of those absolute value functions are similar to. So if you remember, when we do something to the outside of the absolute value symbol, in this case we add 2, what happens? Well, that's a vertical shift up 2 units. And if we look at the second example, that is a vertical shift downwards four units. So we start with the parent function and we're going to shift it up two. And so notice that we're going to be basically just going vertically here and we're going to end up with this graph. If it's the absolute value of x take away four, that's a vertical shift downwards four. So from this origin, one, two, three, four, we know that that's going to be the new origin and it's going to be angling up like that just shifting down 4. So the graph would look like this. Adding or subtracting something on the outside of the absolute value symbol is a vertical shift up or down. Let's take a look at our next example. As always, if you can't remember all these patterns, you just make an xy chart, um, find values of x, and then calculate the values of y. Well, it turns out that we're actually going to shift to the right 6. So from the origin here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we are going to have our first ordered pair there. Now, as we continue to figure this out, if you didn't know the pattern on your xy chart, you would see ordered pairs like this. And it would graph like this. In our next example, it's x take away a negative 2. All right, we're going to notice that the number being subtracted from the x tells us which way it's going to go. Notice we're subtracting a negative 2. So yes, we're going to go to the left. So from here we go back 2 and then ordered pairs would look like this and it'll graph it like this. In our final example on this page, notice that it says x plus 4. Well, we kind of have to think backwards. What are we subtracting? Because the key here is this subtraction symbol. All right, we have to make it into a subtraction idea. And then the number that's later tells us the shift. Notice we're subtracting negative 4, so that must be a shift left. So, again, from the blue absolute value function, 1, 2, 3, 4, that'll be my new origin, and the ordered pairs would be going like this. Let's graph it. So as you can see, this pattern is actually a little more complicated, but inside the absolute value symbol, it's a subtraction idea. Let's look at another example. All right, now we have a multiplier on the outside, multiplied by a constant. Okay, and what happens is we take the parent function, and the bigger this number is, the more pinched together the lines are. So it'll be, um, and we'll figure out on our xy chart, basically how that looks, but we're going to pinch these closer together. If it's negative, then it's going to invert. All right, so that's the effect of the multiplier on the outside. And then, of course, we have looked at what happens on the outside number. That is going to shift up 3. This is going to shift down 4 because of the negative. So we take all that new into account, and here's how we graph that. All right, we're going to take the origin of this parent function, y equals absolute value of x, and we're going to um, 
move it up three, one, two, three, and we'll just stop there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put in some values. If x is positive one, three times one is three plus three is six. All right, and let's do one more. What if x is positive two? Three times two is six, six plus three is nine. All right, now um, absolute value would would basically mirror what we have. So it is gonna be a pinched blue function and it's gonna graph like this. Notice how not only did we shift um, vertically upwards three, but we bent the original function in and that's because of the positive three multiplier on the outside. So two things happen. Now let's look at the next one. So um, analyzing this function, we have a negative four on the very end of it, which means that we are going to shift down four from the original place. So from this vertex, one, two, three, four. And now we know it's gonna be inverted because of the negative for the negative two on the outside. And two is a bend, not quite as much of a bend as this red function up here, but let's go ahead and do some ordered pairs. All right. Now we know that if x is zero, y just goes straight down to negative four. We've already got that graphed, okay? What about positive one? Well, negative two times a positive one, absolute value of one is still one. So negative two times one is negative two, take away four more, negative six. Negative two times positive two is negative four, take away four more is negative eight. All right, we have enough to graph one side of it and then it's a mirror image here. So positive one, negative six. And positive two, negative eight. All right, so it's gonna be graphed like this. So again, we take the blue parent function and notice how it gets inverted because of this negative on the two on the outside. And it gets bent in a little bit more because of that multiplier effect and the vertical shift down. So three things actually happen with that. Now I would like you to try these on a piece of paper. Just kind of sketch it out. Remember to start with the parent function and I'll leave those up to you to take a look at the positive and negative vertical shift, horizontal shift, and any kind of multiplier or inverted factor with the in front of the absolute value symbol. All right, good luck and thanks for watching this video. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.